Hey, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. Okay, now, y'all have probably seen this. The whole world is expecting Iran to attack Israel. So our question today is, where does that fit in Bible prophecy? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for our salvation. Thank you for the blood that was shed. We thank you for giving us the King James Bible, a book, Lord, that we may know absolute truth, and you have revealed the future to us in your word. Help us now to rightly divide that and uh, to bring honor and glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so... Uh, basically, when we, we're talking about end time events and words like Armageddon, end times, second coming, and all that come into play, uh, then we know we're, we're, we're dealing with uh, stuff that uh, is covered in the book of Revelation. All right. So we're going to just look at a couple things in Revelation first to kind of set the context and uh, then, then we'll look at some options and kind of see how some of the pieces fit, if you will. All right. So we look in Revelations 19, and th this is the time uh, that we call about the Battle of Armageddon. This is at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, where uh, all the armies of the world have surrounded Jerusalem. It, it, looks, it looks like it's all up and done for them, and uh, then uh, then then the Lord Jesus comes. So we'll just uh, um, we'll pick up on that uh, chapter nineteen, verse eleven. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called a faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This is the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ, where his feet lands on the Mount of Olives, where he takes his seat on the throne of David, and he rules and reigns for a thousand years. The, uh, that's the word millennium means a thousand. So this is, this is the millennium. This is the millennial reign of Christ. Jesus Christ comes, smashes out the armies of the Antichrist, and sets up his kingdom for a thousand years. Now, during that thousand years, Satan is bound. But at the end of that thousand years, he is released for a short time, and he gathers a bunch of fools, and they come and try, and try, and try to attack again. All right? So you can see that in chapter 20. And it says, And when the thousand years are expired... Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is the sand of the seas. <laughs> and this battle is covered in one verse. <laughs> and they went up on, on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them the end. That was a whole battle. Okay, so we're looking at two options here. Uh, you'll notice that the second option, actually, that was when Satan is released at the end of the thousand years, and that actually included Gog and Magog, all right, which we know is modern day russia soviet union whatever that that that's that's gog and magog all right so the options are that uh 
when we go back and look at this prophecy about the battle with Gog and Magog, that's one of the options. We're going to look in Ezekiel uh, chapter 38 and 39 here in a minute. That's one of the options. Now, in the first option we read, uh, the battle of Armageddon, Gog and Magog weren't mentioned, but they really don't have to be mentioned because in Joel chapter 3, we have another description of the battle of Armageddon. And, and here's what it says. He says, uh, uh, Joel chapter 3, verse 1, For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, amen, I will gather all nations, see that all nations, I will gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, uh, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Uh, and he says down here in verse 9, Proclaim ye among the Gentiles, prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. And uh, verse 11, Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about thither, cause thy mighty ones to come down. So verse 13, verse, uh, 14, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Uh, then you come down to verse 16. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion, utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. Amen. So uh, uh, verse 17, we get, so, so shall you know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. So we see that in Joel's vision of Armageddon uh, that it's all nations. So we really don't need in Revelation chapter 19 with the coming of the Lord, we don't really need them to say that Gog and Magog are involved here because it's all nations. All right. That's just setting the stage. Now let's look back at Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39. Now, there's different interpretations of this, and there's like three options, and all of them kind of fit. I'm just giving you my personal opinion, and uh, uh, I'm not, uh, uh, I agree to disagree agreeably with anybody else. If you see two battles or when this battle is, and that's okay, that's okay, because we, we know, hey, hey it, what, what's important is that all that they're all they're all prophesied and they're all coming and exactly how they fit. But this is the way I see it. Amen. So I get over here to Ezekiel chapter thirty eight, and he says, uh, "And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him." And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thy army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Look at verse 5. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his bands, and the house of Torgarma of the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. Okay, so now Gog and Magog, that's Russia. Persia, that's Iran. That's Iran right there. And then when you've got Ethiopia and Libya, uh, you have uh, 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 your... Uh, African Islamic nations, and then down here you've got Gomer and Togarma. Togarma is modern day Turkey. Okay, so three names we got right here is Russia, Iran, and Turkey are in are in this group right here that comes down in this battle, which I think this is the battle of Armageddon. I don't think this is a battle that happens before the second coming of the Lord. And I don't think that this is 
that very short battle at the end of the millennium. Other guys got other views of it. But here's why. Here's why. Because they'll, they'll look at this and they'll say, well, this is the battle. This is one battle. And then they'll come over to chapter 39 and they'll say, well, here, this is another battle. I don't think so. Because when you get to the end of chapter 38, chapter 39 starts with the word therefore. See? Therefore is a linking word. In other words, they just gave you all this information and say, because of this, Therefore, so we're still talking about what we were talking about in, in, in 38. That's the way I see it. Don't argue with anybody about it, but that's the way I see it. So I think when we get into chapter 39, we're still talking about Armageddon. Amen? He says, Therefore, thou son of man, prophesy against Gog, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I'm against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. Amen. And I will turn thee back and but leave a sixth part of thee. Then um, he comes down and he says, after after this battle, uh, he says, and they that dwell in the cities of Israel should go forth and, and set on fire and burn the weapons uh, and, and shields and the bucklers and bows and arrows and hand staves and the spears. And they shall burn them with fire for seven years. And then when you get up here, uh, verse 12, and it says in seven months shall the house of Israel be burying uh of them, uh, the bodies, okay? So, obviously, this can't be the battle at the end of the millennium, because at the end of the millennium, after that battle, then we go to the great white throne of judgment, and the uh, heavens are purified. There's no seven years or seven months to be doing anything, because at the end of that battle, that's it. The heavens are purified by fire. Go to the great white throne of the judgment. Then you get a new heavens and a new earth. So that's why that's why I think that uh, all of this is simply talking about the battle of Armageddon. All right. So now we got Russia. We've got Iran, and we've got Turkey. I'm wondering. If you might have seen this in the news, that is the president of Iran, or the head Shiite, the imam, whatever, that is President Erdogan of Turkey and President Putin of Russia. They already teamed up. They're ready to go. <laughs> so, Man, this, this is exciting times because, hallelujah, in 587 B.C., God told you through the prophet Ezekiel that this is what was going down in the end times. And if, if we got all the players ready for the big battle of Armageddon, which comes seven years after the rapture of the church, the body of Christ, then how much closer is our gathering together to him, the catching away of the bride, the rapture of the body of Christ? How soon must that be when all the players are already on the field and ready to go for Armageddon, just like the prophet Ezekiel said, Boy, you'll not beat the book. Amen. We live in exciting times. If you're ever going to do anything for the Lord, you better do it now. Amen. God bless you. I hope that was a blessing to you. And we'll see you in the next one.